Hello, I'm JW, and in this video it's another piece of old testing equipment, and this is a neon voltage indicator, not one of those uh, useless neon screwdrivers. Uh, here it is in here, it has actually the two prongs there, so of course uh, used for detecting voltage between two points. And it comes in this rather tatty old box and has the original instructions inside, so let's have a closer look. Right, now this is the item here. It's uh, reasonably old, I would guess probably 1970s or maybe very early 80s. And as you can see, it comes with the uh, two separate uh, prongs there, connected by a piece of wire. And we've got sort of half of the original box. And also got the instruction leaflet here, which again is in a fairly poor condition. Sort of had a uh, label stuck over the centre of it, uh, presumably when it was actually done, because whatever they printed underneath, of course, was presumably changed at some point. So uh, there we have it, and uh, it's called the Eversafe Potential Indicator Type B. And as it says on here, I'll put a better copy of this on for a uh, download rather than uh, this sort of a manky uh, example here, but uh, essentially it's a uh, two pole device. It contains a neon indicator inside, and it's also got the uh, resistors in there to limit the current. And as it's here, it's enclosed in epoxy resin, so the whole thing is totally uh, potted in there and sealed, so of course it won't have any danger of uh, getting water and other contaminants inside. And say so it works from about 65 volts AC, and uh, it goes up to around 650 volts. Uh, notice it's called medium voltage there, that's not the correct term anymore, but of course it was when this was actually made. And you can test it for operation by Mega, which is one of those things that puts out 500 volts to check the quality of insulation. And also that's well within the range that it's designed to detect. So it has uh, resistors in each prod, which we'll have a look at in a moment. All the connections are soldered, no springs or screws. And the ends have only 5 eighths of an inch of bare conductor, uh, rubber cable, and uh, it only weighs 6 ounces. So. Uh, that's that fairly uh, brief there, of course, but uh, let's have a look at the item itself. So we've got the two test probes here, the uh, one's coloured red and one's blue. Plastic uh, body, and then we've just got the wire connecting between the two sides there. So of course you would just place these on the two terminals and it would indicate if there was a voltage between. Now both probes are uh, very similar, and you see it's got the insulated uh, covering there with just that small section of metal at the end, which is... Uh, that's actually too long for uh, regulations today, but of course at the time that was probably perfectly acceptable. And uh, you see we've actually got some text uh, inside of the barrel there. It's uh, fairly difficult to actually read, but uh, essentially it's just repeating on the, from the instructions of the uh, standard that it complies to. And uh, if you have a look inside there, you can see the resistor in there with the uh, coloured stripes on there. And the whole of this interior is actually filled uh, with resin, so uh, there's no way of uh, getting in there or opening it. And of course that's designed so that uh, any moisture and whatever can't actually get in there. And the outer of this is just a uh, plastic tube. And of course the ends have just been uh, pushed in there and glued in place. So this one we've got, it's got a single resistor, soldered connections inside. And of course that's where the cable just comes in there and is linked on. So uh, that's all that's in that end. And uh, the other probe of course is the one with the neon indicator inside. And again we've just got the uh, printing on the outside in red there for the actual voltage is applicable. Now I've noticed this actually has a crack all the way down the side there. It's a bit difficult to see, but see it goes all the way down the edge there. The uh, person on eBay was selling this uh, stated it was in perfect condition, but the picture actually showed the crack, so it's not actually a surprise that it has that, but clearly the seller was uh, obviously blind or uh, didn't see it or something, but anyway there's also another smaller crack on this side. and. Uh, a similar construction, just a plastic tube with the resin filling the entire space inside. But in this case we've just got the uh, small board in there to support the various components. So we've got a uh, resistor there, again fairly similar to the uh, one at the other end. The neon uh, indicator there, which is just a uh, small glass enclosure with neon inside and the two electrodes. And so those are mounted onto a uh, well, fairly primitive type of uh, circuit board type thing. And again, just soldered, of course, to the end prod there, and obviously to the cable that comes in at the top, at the end there. And uh, not really a lot else inside. It is literally just a neon resistor there and uh, resistor in the other one. So, of course, when you apply voltage here, 
resistors limit the current and the neon uh, should illuminate. And the only thing to note here is the neon itself has got a piece of green and red tape either side. Just say green on that side there. And again red over there. And that's presumably put in there to sort of aid identification of the uh, colour of the thing if it was in a poorly lit or overlit environment. Now although there's a crack in it, uh, so the entire centre of it is filled with resin, so that crack isn't actually going to affect uh, the operation of it. So let's connect it up to a uh, voltage here and then see if this actually still works. So I'll just use these uh, clips here so we don't have to touch the device while using it, though it's probably uh, perfectly safe, but of course much safer to uh, not actually touch it at all. So uh, what we should see of course is just the neon inside uh, illuminating. This is just the normal uh, 250 volt uh, main supply, so uh, let's see if it illuminates. Yeah, and there we go, as you can see it's clearly uh, illuminating in the orange colour there. So again, there's a closer look, and you can see the uh, orange neon flickering away inside. They uh, generally flicker when they get old because uh, some of the gas uh, can obviously uh, leak away, and uh, that's a fairly common effect on like, old indicators on uh, switches and things do a similar thing. So again, it seems to be working perfectly, so uh, again, we'll just switch off there. You can see it's uh, quite clearly visible even under these uh, fairly bright lights. And a close look at the text, as you can see, it's uh, essentially just got the EverSafe uh, brand name there, potential indicator, uh, 650 volts uh, AC or DC, type B, as on the instructions, and the uh, just patent number and then the manufacturer's name, which is uh, TSG Seaward. Now, Seaward still exists as a manufacturer, though, of course, uh, not actually uh, the same one that made this particular item. Uh, this item sort of circa 40 years old. And the text on the other side there, so have a look at the beginning. It's uh, quite difficult to get because obviously it's, uh, it actually appears to be on a flat piece inside, and then it's sort of been overfilled with the resin, which is rather bizarre. But essentially, just conforms to the uh, various standards there. Uh, it's really just repeating what was on the instruction leaflet about the uh, factory inspectorate and uh, where it should be used. And you'll see though that some of the resin hasn't actually totally filled that. It may well be due to this uh, crack appearing here that's got a bit of an air bubble just forming on the top there. And it's not totally clear why this is actually split, but it may well be due to the resin inside expanding and contracting at a different rate to the outer plastic tube. Of course, over many years of that, it uh, could have actually just expanded slightly more than the outer and caused that crack to go all the way down the side there. And so there is also a smaller crack on the other side here, which uh, is probably due to the same kind of process. So that's a quick look there at the EverSafe potential indicator. That's a two-pole test device with just a neon indicator inside. And uh, this sort of style of thing is uh, probably okay to use, but of course this particular one has that uh, long crack all the way down the red probe there, so uh, probably not something you want to use in this particular case, but uh, the uh, principles of that are still perfectly valid, just as they were 40-odd years ago. So until next time, thanks for watching.